organizing in politics and um, uh, I don't know what you community service. I don't know what you call it, that sort of thing. Christopher Reeve was, like all human beings, very complicated. And he wasn't all good and he wasn't all bad. And I say that as someone who knew him through four movies and for years and years and years. So it's impossible to answer a question with, I could say to you, he was a great guy. But the truth is he had a lot of sides, as we all do. And I got to know him like a brother. And uh, so sometimes we fought and bickered the way you bicker with your siblings. We never were romantically involved. There was never any sexual attraction. Um, and when he went through that hideous accident, I thought of all the people, this is the guy who's not going to know how to cope with this. And he was remarkable. He did know how. He went somewhere in himself and came out a, a more fully rounded and extraordinarily beautiful human being. Um, what he did with that hideous misfortune, what he turned it into, is truly remarkable. And he helped a lot of people. So I have a lot of love for him and his memory. Yeah. Back to the um, Have you done any of the telephone um, messages where an actor will record a message and they'll send it to the different people? And, and Back to what, John? The election. Oh, the election. Yes. Oh, you're talking about something we call in the States robo calls, which we hate, and I would never do them. Most <laughs> actors don't do them. They're all these hideous automated phone messages. You'll just sit down for dinner and have just cooked everything that's perfect, and your family's there, and suddenly the phone rings, and it's some hideous message telling you how ghastly the candidate's opponent is. And often they're just full of it, and uh, the in my state they're banned. So we don't do the vote. What we have done is something where you call undecided voters and you ask them, is there any information you can get them uh, about Obama that would help their decision? And you get some pretty startling responses. I mean, I had a woman begin uh, by saying, I have never had a prejudice vote in my body, but Barack Obama scares me. And I said, why? And she said, well, because he's black and he has a Muslim name. And I went, and that's what they call prejudice. <laughs> so I tried to kind of get through that. She said she cared about the real issues. And I said, well, what are the issues you care most about? Most people say the economy or the war in Iraq or the environment, global warming. And she said, he took the American flag off the campaign plane. And you know, you show there have been, <laughs> and you're kind of stuck there. So some of the people you phone, you know you're not going to convince, and then other people. You do convince and you have some really interesting conversations. For an actor, it's fascinating because you come in contact with all sorts of people. But the hideous robocalls where you run down the other person, no, we don't, we don't do those. Do they do them in New Zealand? Uh, sometimes. What's so funny you guys are having an election and you're more interested in ours. And I'm from Canada and they just had an election two weeks ago and I had all these friends calling and going, how can we help Obama? And I said, well, you know, I think you should be a little occupied at home. But this election in the States is so thrilling and so exciting that I think the entire world is absolutely mesmerized. I mean mesmerized. And you see it everywhere you go. I was in the airport coming here, and I was phoning people, but I was calling them to ask for money. Excuse me, we need your money to put that in the paper. And this woman from Australia who was behind me heard me and said, here's $20. And I went, wow. <laughs> Not sure if it was legal. But I took $20. <laughs> so it's, it's been, in the States right now, it's, and here too, I've turned on the TV here. It's just, it's breathtakingly exciting because the first time in a long time, uh, people are really involved and really know that their votes can change the world, not just the state. So it's very exciting. And this thing is war in Iraq. Not that I let my opinions out easily. Any, <laughs> any other questions? Yes. Oh, yeah, just uh, uh, your comments on Smallville. Do you watch it? I beg your pardon? Your comments on Smallville. Oh! Do I watch Smallville? Yeah, which is your best episode? You know, I have a confession. I don't watch much television. 
Um, and I had just like 500 channels. I finally got it down to 60. Um, I, I watched a, a few episodes of Smallville when I did it to see what it was like, and I thought it was really good. I thought it was a really, really good TV series. Um, and it had shades of character complexity that was really refreshing for television. Um, and I enjoyed it. My character got killed off because I wanted more money. And, and that was when I knew that the negotiation had ended. It was when my character was dead. <laughs> Any other questions? Hey, um, it sounds like when you started out in Hollywood, you were hanging out with a pretty interesting crowd, like Scorsese and those other filmmakers. Right. What were they like earlier on? Well, we were all um, kids, uh, bright, nerdy kids, kind of oddballs who didn't fit in to the popular set. I don't know. If, I'm sure you have the same thing in New Zealand, high schools or high schools. But we were all a little brainy and a little geeky and a little, um, I mean, some of us were pretty geeks, but you can be a geek in any shape or size, trust me. It doesn't have anything to do with how you look. It has to do with being that much more interesting, I think, than the other people around you. That's what I think geeks are. Um, people are looking at me as if I've gone mad again, but I haven't. Uh, um, so we were all um, kind of brainy nerds who weren't, um, we weren't as socially easy as perhaps the football players and stuff were. If you if you think of Hollywood as a big high school, which is what it really is, it's a big high school you never graduate from, and everybody's kind of jostling for position. Uh, we were this out of the mainstream crowd, but we knew how much smarter we were than everybody else and how much we were going to do. Marty Scorsese was just as sweet and lovely and brainy and had asthma and all these things wrong with him. Steven Spielberg is exactly what he's like now, really sweet and eager. And, uh, he was very, very, very innocent. And um, we, were, we, we, we gravitated towards each other because we all thought of it differently. And it was considered, in our crowd, kind of tacky to just go after being famous just for the sake of being famous. Paris Hilton wouldn't have made it in our crowd. <laughs> it, it just wasn't done. So uh, uh, we, um, yeah, we weren't mainstream, but we really adored each other and saw the goodness in each other before other people did. I don't know if that's an answer, but that's what we were like. Well, here's my main tip to young filmmakers, having been directed now by a few of them, is throw out the biz end of it and how to impress most and how to make the slickest reel and um, what are the fanciest camera angles and think as a young person about what it is your heart needs to say to the world before you leave the planet. What is it that you're burning inside to say to people? And put that in your movie and start with your heart and your mind rather than putting the slip and the career choices and how much money I'm going to make and how what's my audience going to be. Go back to being an artist, which is expressing that, which we can't generally express over the dinner table. That's just sort of not easy small talk. That's something that we, all of us in the arts, just have to say. Um, there's stuff that has to get out. And if, you, uh, if a young filmmaker should go back to that, right from the heart, right from what you know, and say what it is you have to, you have to say. And I think your chances of being successful with that are way greater than they are with trying to be slick and professional and snazzy and impressive.